Welcome, everybody, to our forecast for June 2020 and the discussion of these June energies here within our Sacred Self-Healing community. A heartfelt welcome. Thank you all for coming. We want to look into our current state by reviewing, by looking back, always remembering the two-way aspect of energies and then uh, what the challenges are here in June, perhaps also what the cool things are. Uh, June is a very intense month. I mean, I know I've been saying this for a couple of months now, but we're really starting a new era here. This is very obvious for most uh, people who can, I want to say, uh, who can make forecasts or who can uh, predict something based on either energies or astrology. So June 2020 uh, will be remembered. Obviously, we have the corona situation that uh, started for most of the world uh, somewhere in March. But uh, what we are now seeing is the greater effects of all of this. So it's always a cool thing to look back. I mean, we, we still have another week in May to go. It's the 24th of May. So who of you is already discovering some of these energies that we discussed last month? and is currently dealing with uh, some of these confusions that I predicted and these uh, polarities that are coming in, this seduction into numbness, into, you know, just, just all too much. There's too much info. It's too contradictive. It's, it's almost um, making us just not wanting to be a part of this anymore. It's like we don't even know what to believe anymore this overload and really no longer will be being interested or are some of you feeling this really strong influx of creativity right now where you are able to maneuver and to work through some things with really cool new fresh ideas yeah and so for some of this is a, a little bit of both yeah i agree with you it's it's really you know showing us the dualities of life there's a lot of things that are uncertain right now we can't really plan ahead we, you know or we try to but then it all falls through we had to move our iceland retreat the only um, workshop that we do in person from the summer solstice to the winter solstice so we're gonna uh, hopefully enjoy this in iceland in december stuff like that and at the same time you know just like with the iceland retreat i'm like man we can see northern lights we can experience something uh, so opposite from a summer solstice that is a uh, really cool it's almost 20 hours completely dark in iceland so there are some really cool aspects to that as well so it's 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 new it's still a bit frightening at times and you said there still is enough time to calm down once in a while. You know, I wonder, I wonder if we would feel the same way if we didn't have this deceleration through the corona situation. Because you know, it does give us more space, more room, if we can see that, if we can really use the time, you know, to maybe go deeper into something or... Uh, just allow ourselves uh, to open something up that we've been procrastinating or that we always wanted to do but never really had the time to. So the, these are some of the positive aspects of these, these completely unprecedented times here in human development and human consciousness evolution, as I always call this. This is the biggest transformation ever for humanity. So. No matter where you're at here on, on the spectrum, on the seesaw, right? Um, understand that, you know, you chose to be here. And I find it useful and, and sometimes almost healing, you know, to talk to myself in that way. And it's not pride, but, you know, to, to appreciate that, you know, also the guts, you know, of <laughs> of my soul self, you know, to like, to let me come into this time. 
you know, as opposed to what we, we could have been born a lot uh, uh, less opportunities. So we are in a time here that is very challenging, but also offers lots of opportunities in the same way. There are things today, even three, four, five years ago that weren't available to us. All right, so uh, there's a lot of uh, real positive momentum in this as well. So I think it feels good to, to, to see the positive things too. You are mentioning something here that has to do with coping. Okay, so when we get into a place where everything, like the universe seems to have conspired against us, it's super, super important that we remember to shift our own energy in that moment. Because the moment you basically neutralize this inside of yourself and you you shift into your higher expression. And I'm not talking about some fancy enlightenment kind of stuff. I'm 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 just talking, you know, shifting your energy back into truth, back into reality, back into who you truly are, what your essence is. All right, all of a sudden, what appeared as a loss or a conspiracy a minute ago uh, comes like a gift or, or a blessing in disguise. It forces us to, to feel more into the essence of things. Not having to be anybody anymore uh, really relieves us of a lot of burden, of a lot of projection. We don't have to be anything anymore and we can be ourselves. So you see there's a two-way component to this. We have to let go of wanting something or getting or having something or being something. All right, like last month I called it, it's a becoming and not a getting or having or owning. All right. And so in the moment we let go of the form, we let go of this expectation or this investment, is the moment where something completely new is being presented to us. And this can be uh, very beautiful at times. Um, yeah, something that, that can come to us like a gift or a blessing uh, unexpectedly out of a crisis, say, or out of a loss. Your perception seems to be shifting. So a lot of yeah. the things that we talk about here is about perception, right? And even this uh, blessing in disguise is really just a matter of, dis of perception. Right, And we can have this with little things too. We can look at things that were so important to us, like say five months ago or so. You know, remember December 19, the end of the year, New Year coming, and we were all so happy that 2019 is over with, <laughs> right? And we're like, oh yeah, and we're gonna have to do this and this and this. And, you know, and all of a sudden that's no longer of importance. And other things, Total unexpected things, sometimes things that because we couldn't have them anymore or because we had to resort to other resources, right, are showing their true value to us. My tip for you, all of you guys, is if you want to become better at, at discriminating that, as discerning if you are off balance, if you're off a little bit, then run through at least these four dimensions of existence physical am i connected with my body am i connected with my emotions am i connected with my thoughts am i connected with my etheric here can i feel my energy just do sort of a quick run through so that you can identify better where a correction or a you know the the the, the the practices that, that we need to apply, then they depend on where we uh, identify these imbalances or incongruencies. But um, we need to first be able to, to identify that we are off. Okay, this is the biggest issue for us because that's where we have our blind spots. That's, uh, you know, basically what flies under our radar. And this has a lot to do with perception and um, the error perceptions of our ego mind. So no matter what the error perception is, right? Let's just call it that way for now. It sounds a bit harsh, but you know, when we notice that we have uh, sort of, uh, you know, overlay or we have um, some kind of confusion about 
where we're at, okay? It doesn't matter how it got there. It only matters that you, in the moment where you get the signal, that you respond to it, that you answer it. And once one finds themselves in that situation, then that needs to become priority, okay? Because as an empath, as an energetically sensitive, it's really not about you uh, becoming better at sucking things up. Okay, you can't uh, go out there and say, hey, guys, you know, I'm an energetically sensitive and you guys need to uh, adjust to my sensitivity. You can't do that either. That'd be entitled, you know, that'd be self-centristic. Uh, you know, I'm in this situation, you know, and uh, it, it sucks and I don't want this anymore. Okay, then it becomes a matter of, you know, how bad does it have to get until you change something? Okay. This is the, the problem with our ego and also the problem with perception in regards to what we what we accept as norm, as normal, okay? So uh, this is a very typical uh, trauma problem that when we have experienced a lot of hardships or it, we, we are so used to, uh, you know, the dysfunctionality around us, uh, be it in families, be it in communities be it at work you know or with our families that we that it literally slips underneath our radar okay and and we end up either questioning ourselves or getting mad at others instead of just removing ourselves from that like entirely like not as an isolating but as in like okay this is not a situation that works for me okay thank you true self for telling me <laughs> you know, that I need to change that in my life, okay? I can no longer live under those conditions. And to then walk the talk and, you know, that's what I meant with reprioritizing, you know, to put everything into changing that. The problem here, and this is a very actual problem for, for June, is the seduction into passivity. And this comes through victimhood, this comes through entitlement, this comes through all our error perceptions, namely that either the others are bad or that I'm bad. And both are polarities, both are extremes, okay? The simple truth, the, the essence of it is, is that you don't do well in an environment like that, period. I wouldn't want to live next to a bar, you know, I just wouldn't. So, so if, if I can't afford it right now, okay, then I'll work for being able to afford it. I make that my priority because if I have to live that way, if I constantly feel like I have to defend myself from my environment and something ain't right, then I don't have appropriate or good conditions for manifestation. This is the part here when I talk about reprioritizing what I'm talking about. You have to be able to pinpoint what the core of all imbalance is. Make that your priority. Dependencies, lack, addictions, it's different for each and every one of us, okay? But we have to know what it is so that we know what to change because we end up getting busy with all kinds of things, complaining or questioning ourselves or, you know, all these things, these distraction mechanisms and miss the point. We miss the point, namely that we have the power to change that if we just shift our priorities, if we just make that more important. So also when I talked about, uh, you know, this, this, this habit, okay, this lifestyle, this this daily routine of really checking in with myself and seeing where I'm balanced, where I'm imbalanced, has to do with that. Because the ability to pinpoint imbalances has to do with being willing to be in truth, being willing to live in truth. And this requires us to be truthful with ourselves. And when we experience repeat after repeat after repeat, what is this really? It's us not listening to our true selves. It's us not listening to our inner signals. It's not rocket science. That's what repeat is. So we got to change something. And sometimes you don't know what to change. Then I always recommend, well, then change something. But when we understand that, you know, no matter what it is that we want to 
manifest. You have to make sure that the conditions are right. Remember the sunflower? You know, we have to have enough water, enough nutrients, enough sunlight, okay, to sprout. It's not enough to just put seeds into the soil. It, we also need the right conditions. And if the conditions aren't right, then it's not because you are a failure or you're not good enough or you need to try harder what you're already doing. No, it's because the conditions aren't right. So you need to change the conditions. So the forecast for June 2020, July 2020 is going to sound very similar. Uh, are really uh, difficult months here for us because they symbolize the end of an old cycle. It's really now clear to everyone that there's an old cycle, but it depends on how you look at it um, or the way it plays out for you depends on how you look at it. You can look at it as a glass half full or um, half empty because it's also the beginning of a new cycle all right and uh, we always uh, have issues you know sort of when we go through um, this this gear shift okay but uh, you know that's really just our ego who uh, or uh, that wants to keep things the way they are the big questions here in June 2020 for all of us will be the question for clarity, okay? So what we need the most is an inner compass. That's why the forecast is called a new compass because we will not find answers in the outside. We still have to go and uh, sort of constantly straddle two worlds and go in and then go out and go in. But June is a bit more inward in that way because the outside is extremely confusing and challenging in that way. It's very contradictive, it's very polarized, it's extremely schismatic now what, uh, or, or the quality of the energy that is coming in here is extremely schismatic. So it'll lead to us being fragmented and, and overwhelm us to a point where we uh, just simply don't want to be a part of it anymore because we can't handle it anymore. So what we really need to to foster here is this attentiveness, this awareness, to be in the now, to know that we are here, to know why we're here, and uh, to also keep an eye on our own inner um, polarization, the contradictions and the conflictions, so that we don't get pulled into the outer conflictions and contradictions. Okay, so this has to do with congruence, all right? Now, the cool things that come in here through all this is that it really allows us to connect with our source better because uh, we have to, all right? We have to. We have to, you know, follow our resources and, and really understand what makes us go, what makes us flow, what keeps us in flow. And uh, you can, uh, of course, then uh, transpose this onto any of the the levels or dimensions of being here, the physical, the emotional, the, the mental, the, the, the social and the spiritual and energetic uh, layer of that, uh, it means that you're going to have to know where this energy comes from and reaffirm that as opposed to getting fixated on the things that distance you from that or that distract you from that. So it's really about a new perspective, I think, in, in regards to this new compass, all right, it's mostly because we are developing a, such a strong a new a way of looking at things and, see, and contextualizing things that uh, we can also begin to make new connections. Um, <clears throat> most of that will have to do with us needing to reprioritize what's really essential for us, what's really of value for us because these things will continue to be tested, especially here in June and also July. Uh, we need to work on this communication with ourselves. It has to be more precise, more clear. Our word has so much power. There's a lot of uh, really, really cool manifestation energies in June. And uh, in the beginning of June, you'll actually feel a, a, a download, you know, something uh, that will make you feel like, whoa, you know, I just received an upgrade here. But I, I have to put the brakes on that a little bit because it's not mature yet, all right? So there's too much 
back and forth inside of you yet that requires you to be a bit more adaptable. All right, you have to be able to to deal with things as they arise. It's not the time, uh, I would say the whole entire June, is not the time to make long-term plans. Um, that would be something that I would um, delay until the mid of June, all right, when things become a little more clearer because of these um, backs and forths that I've already mentioned in May, okay. Um, most of what you will need is this energetic awareness of when you go out of balance, when you are off somewhere and you have to prioritize getting back into balance right there, right then. All right. You, this will then turn your manifestation into a more conscious process as opposed to getting caught in, in all this unconscious, erratic ADHD uh, type of stuff because that, that's what June feels like. All right. And it will help you to develop more confidence within yourself, you know, also more confidence to speak up, right? Because most of the issues that we have with ourselves that lead to us questioning ourselves or questioning our reality, they have to do with us not trusting in ourselves, trusting in our guidance, right? And constantly questioning ourselves. So there's a huge sort of reprogramming, rewriting our story potential here in June and um, also a, a, a whole new level of learning. I call this meta learning or higher learning. Uh, you can uh, see, uh, watch me uh, in the um, truth talks, you know, demonstrating this. So it's it, it creates a whole new setup, really, a whole new context with which we can see or perceive our reality and discern truth. So discernment of truth is then really what we receive through this this new compass, this new calibration, okay? So uh, uh, some of the challenges that, that come in here, which have to do with too much info, too much control, too much fear of mistakes, um, too much confusion, all right? They lead to this uh, super ineffective way of living, okay? Where our energy is way too frazzled and fragmented uh, and where we end up either, you know, just numbing ourselves or waiting waiting for something we're going into this passivity with this and then uh, uh some of us you know who we'll just sort of get distracted with escape uh, strategies or fantasizing mentalizing futurizing you know uh, things that all of that is distraction and bad energy management guys it's really important that we are aware of where our energy goes what we are focusing on where our attention goes what we're energizing and especially what we are, what we get fascinated or what we get mesmerized by, what we begin, what we obsess about. Okay, so this can be thoughts or emotions or even physical things or even spiritual things sometimes, because these obsessions, you know, they can lead to possessions. That's, that's you know, term from, from energy work here, not not in this uh, religious uh, context, but from an energetic point of view. Uh, it's literally uh, where your dependencies and all that turns into remote control, where you are being controlled from the outside. So it's really, really important that you learn to discern truth. And the reason for that is because you need to know when you're off center, when you're imbalanced, when the information that you're ingesting or the opinion that you are um, uh, you know, exposed to or that you are or convincing yourselves of or that you're defending, all right, that you that you know the quality, the energetic quality of that. This zero point is filling yourself up with yourself um, that allows you to find the source. And for some of us, this means that we have to recontextualize our whole entire life story, you know, uh, sometimes in a forced way, you know, through losing a job or through ending a relationship or you know, some of these things that can happen uh, in uh, times of transformation, right? But uh, you need to understand that, you know, whatever is coming in now is preparing you just for another big transformation, okay? So this is just really the beginning of a year and a half, full on outer and inner reprogramming, recoding, rewriting of everything, okay? We are in the most intense, most exciting 
um, and most transformative times in the history of humanity. And it's okay, you know, to be overwhelmed sometimes. It's okay to tell yourself, okay, that's a little rough, all right? Um, but uh, you can also send appreciation to yourself and uh, even be a little proud of, you know, choosing to to incarnate into times like this, all right? So that's why it's really important that we also know why we are here. So seeking purpose is now uh, beginning to become more internalized. That's the really good news because all oh, the external stuff is, is so off the charts, insane almost, all right, that uh, we cannot really look on the outside anymore. Uh, that's the, the really good part about this because there is no norm anymore, okay? This is unprecedented. Not, none of what is going on right now has ever happened before. And so we're all going to have to come up with, um, uh, you know, what's essential, what works best for us, all right? And that's what we need this, this discernment for, okay? It's no longer about conforming or just because we've always done it, this way, we have to do this now, or that's the best way, or the only way, or the right way. All that is falling away now. It's really, really cool, actually. We're standing here with the freedom to consciously manifest where we want this all to go. The only problem is we don't really know yet how to deal with this freedom as a whole collective. And so, yeah, it's a bit like kindergarten right now. And it will be, it will stay like this for a while. All right. So that's the part that uh, where we need to be patient, where we need to compa be compassionate, let other people be. We understand that everybody has their own journey here, but all in all, uh, these changes, this transformation that is coming in here will show us the way to act in more responsible, more sustainable, and, uh, you know, actually. Uh, higher expressions of living together as a whole collective, all right, seeing that we are actually all connected and uh, that, you know, it's important for us as a soul self to individuate and to recognize that we are our own soul self or soul sovereign, but then at the same time that we are also all connected as souls, all right, and uh, that we need to work on this together because we can't single ourselves out. That's separation, that's darkness, guys. So whenever we separate uh, ourselves, whenever we compartmentalize, whenever we, you know, uh, want to be special or want to be better or, you know, even the, the other extreme, when we question ourselves and uh, too afraid of making mistakes, all right, we're in darkness, we're tapping in darkness because, uh, you know, it shows us that we're separated. So what's, the, what's the, the, the thing that we can do? We need to focus on connecting, 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 connecting on all levels. That's what embodiment means. And ideally to bring all these different uh, aspects of being here together, all right, to make them congruent. So let's look at uh, the, the chakras here, the energies that, uh, the energy centers that it will be most challenged. It's mostly the Fifth and the second chakra, that's a theme now for the next month. Second chakra, the digestion, the metabolizing of energies, of emotions, of thoughts, and uh, physical events. All right, uh, this is very important. This needs to uh, uh, become a little more effective. Okay, so on a physical level, you know, we obviously have to deal with our digestion with our diet with our lifestyle here in in regards to our emotions we have to learn uh, you know to work with our emotions and to feel again we cannot let ourselves be driven you know blindly driven by what we don't want to feel or cut ourselves off from feeling all right this is uh, basically ego all right this uh, a drive to to avoid the pain of the past you know, most of us realize if we just contemplate for a little bit, you know, that all we have done in our life was to, to avoid one thing, one feeling, okay, be it shame or be it, you know, like embarrassment or uh, be it guilt or being held responsible or be it pain or be it anger or whatever it is, okay, if it dominates your life, that means 
you are in darkness there because you are not in control. Right? And this doesn't mean that you are dark. It just means that you're not aware, that you're not really in the center of your compass. Okay? That you're not in your compass rows. You might be somewhere on the outskirts there, but it, it will still, you know, mess up your navigation, your future. Okay? Because you're not in control of where you're going. You can't triangulate that. So, uh, collectively, um, uh, you know, th there's a lot of uh, negative things to report, and I don't want to be sort of a, a doomsayer here, but yes, we're going to have to deal with issues uh, with resources. This is starting to kick in now, okay, and this will continue to escalate uh, uh, throughout the year, towards the end of the year especially, where we have collapsing supply chains. Right now, it's just a few um, uh, bankruptcies here and there. Um, but there was going to be severe issues with resources, especially food, here uh, within the next year. Okay, so this is starting to kick in, and there's a, a very collective or karmic collective aspects to this, because the, indust the indust industry <laughs> interesting parts about that is is that it seems to hit those industries um, that uh, were really not uh, very integrous in the past, the hardest. So that's something we need to uh, observe here. Most of what is coming forward here in this month of eclipses, so there's a, there's a lunar eclipse and then a very, very powerful uh, solar eclipse uh, around the, the summer solstice. So that's like a, a double, triple uh, pack here of explosive energies, guys, uh, that uh, we're going to have to deal with. So physical integration to be you know practical to be pragmatic and to translate um you know all these different aspects that are coming in for us into 3d is really really important it will go a little too fast sometimes and it will be hard sometimes to to catch up with ourselves that's why you have to develop this discipline to to slow yourself down once in a while and we really have to look at what we expose ourselves to you know we can't really allow things anymore that are toxic or that uh, in, that are infringing or you know that that mess with the conditions that we are in all right you have to be in charge of your own conditions that is extremely important especially if you're an empath or energetically sensitive person all right because the 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 outside exposure that we uh, experience here in June is so, you know, erratic and back and forth that, you know, it requires flexibility. And if we don't know who we are, if we don't know what we need, if we don't know how to walk away from things that are untrue, that are toxic for us, we can get pulled into it too easily. And even, uh, you know, if it's just through our own, um, you know, fight, flight or freeze, you know, uh, thinking that we're rebelling against something and that that will change something or running away or numbing ourselves. So addictions is a huge subject um, in June more than it already is because emotionally it's really overwhelming and this triggers the fear of big emotions in a lot of people. Now, on the other hand, you know, those who have been working on this, you know, where things such as codependencies and um, you know, the, 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 some of these more mature stances about what we have done in the past and, you know, forgiving ourselves and, and, and seeing that there were a lot of things we simply couldn't see before, you know, this sort of unconditional, compassionate place with ourselves can actually help us, can empower us, can give us the confidence to trust in ourselves again. So there will be uh, really two expressions, the higher and the lower expression of these emotional energies and they'll be completely opposite okay so some people will just go nuts and erratic and some people will really really grow you know and begin to see that everything is perfect the way it is for as long as we are present for as long as life manifests through us not um, to us okay 
mentally uh, it's a bit challenging because of this back and forth and and all most of us are you know sort of on the mental side of things you know we we get caught up in our own thoughts and critical in our voice and so forth um th th this is another good reason why it's so important really to work with our um sensations emotions thoughts and feelings and to learn to discriminate all that because otherwise um, we will become too fixated on that. And, uh, you know, when, when you are too much in your head, when you're too much uh, in your thoughts, all right, and, and you start looping and you start fixating on that, then your manifestations become unconscious. You're literally sort of re-energizing the very thing that you don't want. Lack is a very good example. Most people uh, approach their manifestation uh, from the wrong side. They keep on telling themselves what they don't want anymore and what they don't want to do anymore. And uh, the uh, the manifestation then is the opposite. So the, uh, one thing that, that will be really deceiving here, and this is also part of the propaganda, but it's also part of the overall uh, con con uh, confusion and cluelessness is that we will feel like we need more info, we need to study more, we need to get more stats, we need to get more data, also here in, in a collective way, so all these uh, social tracing programs and so forth, of course, so that we can better trace uh, the, the, the COVID uh, infection rate and so forth, but um, all this, uh, guys, is something that uh, we really need to pay attention to because I've mentioned this uh, over the years many, many times. The the resource of the future is data, and data, our data that we produce here on our computers, on our phones, our uh, uh, internet, uh, you know, like all the everything, you know, our banking data, or uh, you know, like our everything that is basically computerized and controlled is our data and this has a value for a lot of companies and they are literally milking this right now they're harvesting this right now so you're gonna have to change your perspective on that a little bit um, because it's gonna get used against us all right now socially and in our relationships and businesses guys it's still open comms, speak your truth, learn to speak with the confidence of a true self, find your own voice. This is a huge, huge topic for June so that you can consciously make choices. And if somebody questions your feelings or your choices, all right, then don't get yourself in this defensive mode where you think you have to justify or you have to convince somebody else you have the right to feel in a certain way about things right and <clears throat> if somebody tries to manipulate that you know then we can also call this gaslighting or crazy making or propaganda okay or at least uh, you know dogmatism so just because uh, we've always done it that way or just because uh, it's the right way or whatever other people say doesn't mean that it needs to be true for you so if you want to do if you want to express or if you want to make choices that are a bit a, a bit against the, the 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 grain all right then just make sure that you are absolutely congruent with it and don't worry about what other people say all right this is a, can be a wonderful uh, quantum leap for you into a new level of creativity and um ingenious invention really then people will really show their true colors in that way here in June, you know, where they, you, you'll be able to see the conformists and and uh, the, the creative and uh, flexible people, all right? But it has to do with really being in your own center. So without that and the ability to discern what's true and what isn't, what's yours and what isn't, um, you know, without that compass, all right, you... You're going to be a little like a floating, bobbing a little boat on the big ocean, okay? So, uh, you know, put your own sail on, you know, you don't exactly need to know where you want to go, but you need to at least know where you're at, okay? Now, spiritually, uh, there's a whole new level here that comes in. And uh, one thing I want to point out uh, that I have recently mentioned in the truth talks, especially with the dark and the light forces, 
is, uh, you know, when it comes to having a compass, it really means that you uh, need to be able to know what you're aligning yourself to. And as much untruth and as much darkness we are experiencing right now, uh, we are also uh, getting a lot of influx here from the outside, from the celestial, from source, if you will, that's bringing back divine order. And divine order is not a law and order. It's the balance of all. It's the mut mutuality. It's this, this interaction with us finding the center, you know, the trinity of things. And those of you who are spiritually inclined, this is a wonderful month here in June to actually go into a two-way calm with, uh, you know, whatever energies, entities uh, that are supporting you with only one exception. You have to know exactly uh, so what the true nature of these entities uh, is, all right? So... I, I'm suspecting that many of you will uh, see these archetypal representations and maybe angels and so forth here in June, um, which is all real, you know, but it doesn't necessarily have to be true. So there's also a lot of imposters there. That's the, the, the you know, the dark side of uh, of the force, you know, uh, has this uh, sort of uh, a disguise as its uh, as its force, okay? And so you need to understand that without you being able to uh, spiritually discern, have a spiritual compass, uh, you can also easily um, become a victim here of uh, fanatism or, uh, you know, off the charts dogmatic things, okay? So it will feel very spiritual, but there's also the danger um, to get pulled into dogma again. And now energetically, then the, 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 those are really the two main themes, namely energy management, that's uh, sort of the, the pragmatism that I mentioned earlier, and uh, the energetic discernment. So when it comes to like beings and entities, it's really important that you st stand in your own center, you fill yourself up with yourself in your own light, and you speak with the confidence of a true self and you demand for everything uh, to reveal its true nature. And in etheric protection, we teach you to do this at least three times because uh, that's uh, basically your power, okay, to insist on that if you are aligned to the source of its existence itself, all right? We cannot externalize our spiritual powers, our energetic uh, or etheric energies any longer. This is uh, now really the time of spiritual freedom in its beginnings, okay? So this will take much longer until that becomes sort of a mainstream uh, type of thing. But right now, you got to understand that if you're listening to this and if you're interested, if you resonate with this kind of information, this kind of meta learning, okay? Um, will re really show you a new level of existence, namely your etheric existence. So a lot of people will learn to uh, connect with their etheric self and you know, begin to see the world in a whole new light. It really recontextualizes everything. The challenges for us, um, the beginning of the month of June, really important that we tune into this uh, inner compass and that we know where our zero point is and that we focus on discernment because you're going to run into a lot of blocks, okay? The, your energy feel, will feel very blocked, you know, like the, like an engine that is running, but, uh, you know, with uh, no transmission, okay? So it, that's where the, the energy management part comes in. And um, then towards the middle of June, you know, we're going to see a lot of power str struggles erupt. There's a whole entire sort of redistribution of wealth, redistribution of um, resources and uh, power struggle going on, okay? And that requires you to really step into your own etheric self here uh, because there's also a lot of uh, sort of dark entities that are being released into the collective field that can torment us, especially those of us who are energetically sensitive. Um, and then towards the end of June, guys, yeah, that's the, the last... 10 days of June are going to be rough. Okay, I'm, I'm going to let you know this is, you know, a, a hard time. This eclipse uh, season here does not feel good. 
um, lots of relationship issues, uh, relationship breakups, uh, lots of sort of clashes, uh, you know, collectively as well, socially as well. Um, you know, they're going to come up with new rules and new laws, and it will really distress everybody. Um, you know, this war energy that has been uh, around here for the last six week, weeks, um, it's not really going to manifest uh, anymore in this uh, sort of classical way of war making. It's going to manifest more in the sense of war of data or war of propaganda. Okay, we're going to see this in June rise. All right, this. Uh, uh, will really go on for another year, year and a half, okay? So, yeah, it isn't really until the, the very end of the month and actually the, 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 be, the beginning, the 1st and 2nd of July, where this is, you know, sort of coming to a halt, coming to like a catharsis, okay? And uh, that is sort of the, the part that we need to brace ourselves for, that is the part... Uh, you know, why it's so important for you to uh, learn energy management and um, be very clear about who you are and what you are aligned to, because that's some tough stuff, okay, that's coming here. But again, you know, it also comes in with the opportunity to really mature and grow and to make this a uh, massive quantum leap here for ourselves in consciousness level as well as manifestation so june has wonderful manifestation energies guys um but they'll come in disguise so we have to uh, be willing to be truthful with ourselves and our environment and make the necessary steps to uh, increase or better our conditions because uh, you know especially towards the end of the year this will be like an endurance run okay so I hope that this doesn't uh, uh, sort of throw that this doesn't throw you into uh, like powerlessness because um, I really gave you uh, the tools and the recipe here and how to counteract all this and how to turn this around for yourself. So this concludes the uh, the forecast uh, portion here of our uh, current energies discussion. All the best. Bye bye. <laughs>